DAISY stands for Dryden Aqua Integrated System, and it's our biological approach to pool water treatment. Huh? Yeah. And today we are uh, talking about our coagulation flocculation product APF, but really also want to explain you in detail, you know, what's flocculation, coagulation. Then we will talk about ACO. Yeah, you ACO, on your side. the best stabilizer for all outdoor pools, replacing the need for cyanuric acid and uh, supporting the disinfection power of the, the natural disinfection power of the sun. I and think especially for you in the US, it's, it's a game changer. It's a beautiful product. And then as, uh, as always, we take your questions at the end. Huh? Yep. I'm actually, I am very excited about this session here because all the products we're talking about are available in the US, they are in stock, and we're ready to sell. So this is really good stuff, right? Yeah, and we do not want to keep them in stock. <laughs> Absolutely not, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. So as always, you have an option to uh, participate, ask your questions here with uh, using the chat function. Uh, this is a great way, just type in your questions as we go through the presentation and we will answer them at the end. As always, uh, all these sessions are recorded. They are available for your review on our website. You can find them. They're there for seven days. Then they will be replaced with the next one. And as always, you can find uh, the program on our website and the slides that we're showing in PDF format is also available for you for download. Okay. Well done. I'm so huh? proud of you. Good, uh, good, six huh? times he did it just in yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You should see me when we do this for the 10th <laughs> time. Huh? Okay. Good. I, I will be here. Biological approach of pool water treatment, right? Not integrated system, as you already said it. It's really the slogan, and this is what I want you to keep in, when, uh, in mind. Prevent rather than kill. Remember, we are not killers. We are preventers. <laughs> Exactly right. So step number one of, uh, of the DAISY system is the filtration with AFM, AFM NG mostly. AFM, as you know from last session, is 100% bioresistant, which means it eliminates all breeding ground on which bacteria can grow and multiply. Yeah, huh? that's, that's the key. Yes. Step number two. Step number two is uh, with APF, you know, we filter much, much finer and we take nutrients out of the water, organics, phosphates, as you will see. And with this, you know, we, we take all the food for, for, for these guys and for algae out. So the, no food, no gross. Yes, exactly. I like it short and short. And now, no food, no gross. Sean, I know step number three, ACO, is one of your favorite products as well. Absolutely. Yeah, ACO, um, this takes the place of cyanuric acid. This is becoming more and more significant in the United States. So like cyanuric acid, we protect chlorine from the sun. Unlike cyanuric acid, we don't reduce chlorine's effectiveness. We also amplify the natural disinfection power of the sun. We'll yep. talk about that in a few slides. Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay. In summary, what does DAISY do? Me oh, me, Sean. okay. Yeah, Sean. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll leave it with Sean. Absolutely. So the, the complete system, the complete DAISY system guarantees filtration down to point up, down to 0.1 micron, um, assuming that our filtration and uh, our velocities are correct. We reduce oxidation demand by up to 80%. Um, and that means if we're using less disinfectants, we're going to produce less toxic or less harmful disinfectant byproducts. And, and what Dry Aqua stands for and what the DAISY system stands for is the safest and clearest water, the absolute best air quality, and the lowest chemical consumption and operating costs. Okay, great. Exactly right. So let's go back to step number one, filtration with AFMNG. We have covered this in detail in session number five. Yeah, we, we will brainwash you yes, this. Yes, <laughs> we will not go back. This session can still be reviewed, replayed online. So if you should have you missed it, please go back and review it. Just to highlight the three key points here about NG. One, 100% bioresistant. So no biofilm growth in the filter bed. Two, a certified one micron filtration. That's at eight gallon per minute uh, per square foot, as we know. So as you go higher in velocity, that number changes, but you will see even at 12 to 15 gallon per minute, 
in square foot filtration velocity, we'll see a four to five micron filtration. And three, very important, and that is an absolutely unique feature that you don't find anywhere else. It's hydrophobic surface. This makes AFMNG extremely good at absorbing organics, which are also uh, hydrophobic. Huh? So again, more details, go back to session five. We're not gonna waste your time here. Uh, we want to talk about those other products. Or watch the video. Or AFM watch the video. video. Two minutes video. and you will know, you need to know everything yeah. you need. Okay. Video is better than So video. step, yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> yeah. true. Especially if they have to watch us for an hour, right? Yeah, on true. the replays, <laughs> I agree. Okay, so step number two, APF, coagulation and flocculation. Huh? Yeah, what can we say? You know, AFM is good, you know, one micron, yeah, but uh, AFM is, next step, a lot better, 0 0.1 micron, and that's a factor of... Well, so I guess if you, if you ask a mathematician, it would be a factor of 10. If you ask a marketing guy, then maybe a factor of 100. Okay, let's <laughs> stay with mathematics. I just heard uh, that uh, in Oregon, I think they... In the future, you ha can have two two uh, answers. Uh, you know, in mathematics, oh, they're changing the yeah, rules, but we are not doing yeah, this. Not, <laughs> I think it's not really good. Though, though really, Daisy is a lot better. Yeah. It's a lot better. And uh, if you yep. go uh, one step uh, more, we want to explain you why it is a lot better. You know, uh, APF is not just a flocculant. There are five different components, which are coagulation and flocculation. Now, here comes the question, Philip. What is coagulation? What is flocculation? Okay, so coagulation is the process of dragging dissolved substances out of solution into small particles or colloids. Huh? That's, the, that's the process called coagulation. So, again, dragging dissolved substances out into smaller particles. Then, in step number two, you have flocculation, which is the process of bringing these small particles together into larger flocks so they can be mechanically filtered out. Huh? Exactly. And I think it's very well illustrated from our marketing director, Florent. You know, you, you see it here. You know, here you have these soft substances. Usually they are negatively charged, and this is why they repel each other. You know, for instance, phosphates, as you will see later on, negatively charged, they're in solution because uh, they repel each other. Now we give in the coagulant, uh, which is always positive uh, charged, or at least in this case, it's positively uh, charged. These are electrolytes and they are neutralizing these charge. So it's not any more negative, it's neutral. And this is how they come together and where you form these colloids. And then really the flocculation, you know, is fishing nets, long change molecules, polyelectrolytes, which are going through the water and fishing these colloids in and make a big, very easy, uh, 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 a big flock, very easy to filter. Yep. But the reaction time is different. Mm -hmm. This is very important to understand. So coagulation happens within seconds and it needs a very turbulent, uh, a very aggressive uh, environment, aggressive mixing environment. Whereas- I've been our families. <laughs> Yeah. So whereas I don't know about yours, but yeah, so I have three kids. Where yeah, it's okay, very I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So so mine is more flocculation then. Okay, it's more yeah. it's more yeah. quiet and gentle, I think. But yeah. this is really what flocculation needs. It takes several minutes to form these flocks, and the environment should be as gentle as possible so we don't break up the flocks in the process. Yeah. This is, for example, the reason why multiport wells in Austria. Not in Switzerland, they are allowed, but not in Austria, in, in public pools, you know, because it's quite, uh, yeah, you change, you change the direction quite often mm -hmm. and uh, they are afraid to, to, to break down the flock. So, yeah, it should be gentle. You know, in water treatment, we give really a long time, you know, sometimes 15 minutes, 30 minutes, we go through decantation really to give time to happen. Now, we can't do this in pools, uh, but if we have, yeah, a couple of minutes, uh, in the line and then especially in the filter, uh, then this is a, a great way to, yep. to remove things. Uh, as I also already mentioned, we have five different uh, components. Usually a flocculant has just one, one flocculant. We have five different. We have three coagulants and two flocculants and this is to make it multi-spectrum. So this is single spectrum and this 
sorry, here is the camera. This is multi-spectrum. Single spectrum, multi-spectrum. You just get a, a, a longer... Cover the whole range. Yeah, you yeah, cover, the, cover whole the whole range. range. Sure. That's it. Uh, let, me, I'm gonna, yeah. let me interrupt really quick. And sure. Can you explain, you, talk, you talked a little bit about Germany and Austria. And can you explain in, that in Europe, flocculation is, is a mandate in some countries? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not in some countries. I think in all the countries I know. Okay. Europe, definitely in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, it's you have in public uh, pools to use flocculants. And this has mainly to do with cryptosporidium. Mm -hmm. so we are coming to this. Remember me if you're on crypto. Uh, it's, it, it's a must. It's not do you want or you don't want. You it's a to. must. Yeah. So uh, a really good, good question. Thanks, Sean. So sure. here, API flocculation. This is just to to, to show coagulation is not an easy thing, but the flocculation is easily uh, to be shown. Here you see these polyelectrolytes, long chain molecules. Now we put them in the solution, in this turbid solution. And then you see, you know, how these polyelectrolytes, long chain molecules go to the water and make it clear. Like a fishing net, huh? Like a fishing yep. net. Yep. And you see it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. We're not used to slow actions, but. <laughs> Then this well. is how your water comes clear. Or in another uh, uh, way, you see here this, this water full of algae. You add the flocculant, you, you uh, mix it gently, mm -hmm. and then you give some time, and then you get uh, this. Okay. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? To add? You are in control. No, I'm and I, you assistant. know, as you as you explained, you have. Uh, when you have turbid water means you have particles that repel each other, yeah. right? So they have a charge that, that prevents them from getting together. They repel each other. When you add a flocculant, coagulant flocculant, like we see here in the second picture, then that starts to change the charge between these particles. They attract each other and they drop out. Yeah. Huh? By the way, that reminds me, you know, sometimes if you have a, a pool which was not in use for some time, you know, yeah. it, which has a really high turbidity. Sometimes you just add a flocculant, let the flocculation process yeah. uh, go, let it settle, and then uh, vacuum it vacuum out. Vacuum it yeah. out. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. if you have a real big problem, yes. right? Yeah. But our approach is a little bit different, Absolutely. which we will show in a minute. Huh? Okay. But this so, may be how you, you, you know flocculation. Yes, yes. So, so as Dominic explained, five active ingredients, three coagulants, two flocculants. Um, we can, with APF, we can remove uh, dissolved organic substances from water. And these dissolved substances make up the big part or the big portion of the oxidation demand of water. Huh? So if you use a regular flocculant, you will not be able to uh, reduce that oxidation demand. One thing that's important when it comes to flocculation and coagulation is to have a balanced or a neutral pH, the range of uh, 6.8 to 7.6. And in order to have a stable pH, you need to maintain a uh, minimum alkalinity of 40 ppm. This is true for all coagulants, flocculants, Absolutely. not just for ours. This, no. is, uh, this is in general. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And maybe how, why this, uh, you explain it or? The next, this one here? Yeah. Well, you can do that. Okay, and, and why this is. Let's call, talk uh, briefly about uh, the pH value. I mean, P, P, uh, pH uh, gives us an indication if a solution is neutral, acidic, or alkaline. We all know this. Actually, it's the concentration of the hydrogen ions, of the H plus ions. If you have a pH of zero here, you have a concentration in this solution of one mole per liter of uh, hydrogen uh, ions, mm -hmm. and you have a concentration of zero point, uh, now you follow 14 <laughs> uh, zeros, <laughs> one, a very, very low number of uh, hydroxide ions, OH minus, uh, OH, uh, minus, uh, uh, minus ions. If you go to a pH of seven, you have, and here you have to help me, I'm, I'm not using Okay, this. so 10, to the power of minus seven yes. H ions, huh? Hydro hydrogen say, ions. And the same yeah. amount of OH minus ions. So you see you have the same quantity positive charge and negative charge ions in the water. And this is what it makes neutral. Yeah. A pH of six is 10 times more 
hydrogen ions and 10 times less of uh, OH minus ions, uh, mm -hmm. just to, 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 to explain this. By the way, this is also where we, we say it's a pH of seven, you know, the, it would be too complicated to say we have a pH of 10 to the power of minus seven. <laughs> that would be a little bit complicated. Yeah, so we that's call it seven, it. that's it. Right? Uh, yep, yep. But that brings us to the zeta potential. Obviously, if we have exactly the same amount of H plus as we have OH minus ions in the water, then we are neutral. If we are on a pH of six, we have this quantity here uh, of H plus and only this quantity of uh, OH minus ions. This is why we have here a positive zeta potential and vice versa on the pH of eight, nine, etc. The factor always goes with a factor of 10. Philip, what is the zeta potential? Yeah. Okay, so in, in simple words, the zeta potential is the charge between particles that are in the water, for example. So here, as Dominic explained, if we have um, a low pH, then we have more positively charged um, hydrogen ions in the water. So um, they repel each other. So the zeta potential goes up. We have a positive zeta potential. On the other side, if we are going higher in the pH, more alkaline, then we develop a negative zeta potential, which means we have more particles with a negative charge that repel each other. But a positive uh, zeta potential or a negative zeta potential is not good for flocculation. You know, the, the, the particles wants to, to repel. Yeah. They do not yeah. want to camber, to come together. So ideally you have a neutral pH and this is why the pH is important. Yep. By the way, if the zeta potential goes down, then the redox potential goes up. This is it's something that we will have a look uh, in the next session. Yep. But for you, really, if you can't, you can't use flocculation at a pH of, of 6 or of 8. It must be 7.6 is fine. Mm -hmm. 7.6 is fine. Okay. Um, a good way, you know, to explain the zeta potential is what I have learned from my grandmother. Maybe the, the young people from you will not remember that anymore. You know, how butter is produced. It's not produced in the in the supermarket. <laughs> um, you know, my 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 mother. You know, she she was grown up on, on on a farm, and they had cows, and they milked them. And if they wanted to make butter, they took this milk and they shaked it for for a half an hour or or, or, or longer. And this is how they did uh, butter and butter milk. Why? Because in the milk you have uh, you have colloidal particles droplets which are negatively charged and this is why they repel each other and now with the, the mixer you remove electrons from the solution so you make it less and less and less negative and then you are neutral and this is how you create butter and buttermilk and in a way oh we left this out here mm, yeah. yeah okay good yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. but anyway, interesting what we can learn from our yeah, grandmothers. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can change the zeta potential just by mechanical. Um, um, yeah, me mechanical agitation. Yeah, uh, agitation. removing this. So uh, yeah. maybe short, one word. We don't have it for America because we don't have these sizes, but we have these static mixers who do the same, who are mixing like like with the butter. Yeah. But we don't have them yet for yeah. America. Yeah. Okay, so here we depend really very much on not just on mechanical uh, coagulation, flocculation, just on the chemical. And exactly. maybe one day we will bring also for America CPMs. Yep, exactly. So um, how, can you, how can you inject, how can you dose uh, APF? As, as we said, we have a, a static mixer that we sell here in Europe as well. So you can inject it directly into the static mixer that will do the mixing. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, the easier, faster and cheaper solution is uh, what we have here. And that is that you inject APF either uh, immediately before uh, your pump, uh, your pool pump, or you inject it into the, uh, the drain plug of the pump. Those are two easy ways to do it. Because Why? Yeah. yeah. Because then after one second, you know, the, the 
uh, APF is in the impeller, and there it's perfectly mixed. You have a very high, it's good mix, it's a, you have a very high turbulent environment, and this is why this is the right uh, case. Maybe you see some insulation, you know, where they dose it after the pump, and believe me, this is wrong. You get so much more efficiency if you do it uh, before. Mm -hmm. That's true. And just to mention that again, so you do it before because the impeller does the mixing. This is very important for the coagulation, yeah. very turbulent. It's very quick, right? And then when you do it that way, you also have the maximum time for the flux to form on their way to the filter. And right? in the filter. Yeah. Yeah. So you also could do it 10 meters before the pump. This I would not do because then you maybe already form some flux which are then destroyed by uh, the impeller. So the best is really very short before the filter, directly in the pump, as you said, yeah. or in the strainer. And uh, here is uh, an example, a case study. This is uh, the Dolphinarium in Madrid, in the zoo of Madrid. Uh, quite big, nine dolphins. And uh, it was... It's a very old installation. Look, this is the installation. Here you see our cold plus filters uh, produced in, in Spain, really good filters. This is how they look after 30 years. Uh, so they are still in operation, they are still great. And uh, the, the zoo, the Dolphinarium, changed the media from sand to AFM, and this made really a big, a big improvement. But it was not really, I got the results and they were, I was not happy with these results. And uh, uh, so I went there and checked what they did. And they did it wrong on the flocculation. So a little bit on the backwashing, this is something improved, but really mainly what they did wrong on the flocculation. What you see here, this green line, this is, comes here from the pump. So this is the, 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 the line from the pump to the filters. So mm -hmm. it comes down and then goes to, to the filters. And they have the injection point of the flocculant they used here. So, I mean, imagine this is a pipe with such a diameter, 400 millimeter. What is this? An inch, yeah. 12, 12 yeah. 24 inches, maybe. So quite, quite big. And then you have here an injection point. You know, the, the flocculant is not mixed. It just travels along the tube and uh, you don't have any, any reactions. So we did change this. It took us 10 minutes because we already had a strainer just before the pump. Very old strainer from Colplus. Sean, you should have a, a look on these strainers. They are brilliant. You know, it's strainer yeah, absolutely. before the pump. <laughs> Colplus strainer. This is how they look. Not when they are new, when they're 30 years old in a seawater application. So we, and there, they also have a, a, a drainage screw. So we injected it in here instead of here. And this made a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. Second point is the dosing pump. You know, uh, flocculants should be dosed on permanence at a certain rate, usually about one milliliter per cubic meters of turnover. Now they did, the, the, the guys in Madrid, they did not do this. They used the pump like this, not a, a nice standard pump. You know, they used the pump like this. Why? Because it was cheaper. You know, these pumps, they make up to five liter and uh, you also can dose maybe two liters. But what they do, they dose only in the night and they only dose five minutes and they wait for 55 minutes. And this is completely wrong because in these five minutes, you're completely overdosing and then you have nothing for 55 minutes and you have nothing during full day. So I asked them, please invest 450 US dollars to replace this shitty pump with this nice, very nice Stenner pump manufactured in the US, by mm -hmm. the way. And on top, we changed uh, the flocculant. They had this, uh, not a multi-spectrum, they had a single uh, spectrum flocculant, no coagulation uh, with APF. And that made really a huge difference. And uh, let me show you this. Video not, not working. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is it's after these changes. Better. This is after these changes. And you see the dolphins, but look at better. the wall behind. You know, before we did Hi, this guys. change, you couldn't see the this wall. Is the baby? Yes. You know, it's a visibility of 25, 30 meters. Uh, this is the baby uh, here. Uh, I was in, I fell in love with, with her. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, it's not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. It's not perfect. We can do it a lot better. Give us a new installation, we can do it a lot better. But it's a huge, huge improvement. I'm not allowed really to tell you how much was the improvement. I give you some indication. Turbidity dropped by a factor of five. 
and combined chlorine went very much down. THMs were, went very much down, but I'm not allowed to give you actual figures. Uh, today, you never know, you know, social media, things like this. <laughs> By the way, also, they had in operation a UV medium pressure with an 8 kilowatt consumption to drop the combined chlorine. We stopped this. It's still installed, but it was never worked anymore. So we are saving 8 kilowatts every hour, 24 hours. And we still, you know, improved it so much. And it really ha mainly had to do with these three points, right injection point, using the right dosing pump, using the right product. But uh, honestly, uh, that's wrong to say, but honestly, I think the first two, two points were mm. really the, the, yeah. the complete game changer. And you see here the trainer, uh, it's not the, the fat guy here. This is my friend Armando <laughs> in Madrid. And the other fat guy, that's me. She's a trainer, small girl. Uh, she does miracles with these dolphins. And it was really a joy also to touch them. And yeah, okay. Uh, watch again. The, it's, this is a lot better. Uh, it's beautiful. This is a lot better. And these are chlorinated systems, yes. just like we have in swimming pools. This is the baby? Yes. What's her name? Coral. Coral. Uh, uh, Corada or Dorada. I didn't uh, really understand yeah. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Back to you. Okay, so let's let's summarize the key points about APF and and why you should use APF. Reason number one, you you will get the clearest water that you can that you can get with a filtration down to zero point one micron, and this is by the way at. Uh, 12 gallon per minute square foot filtration velocity or 30 meters, yeah, huh? not, yeah, a, not yeah, a 20. That's, yeah. uh, that's important. Um, so that's the key takeaway, S clearest water that you can find. Yeah, even with huh? sand, you make, you make a huge difference yeah. with coagulation, flocculation. Of yeah. course, we would recommend AFM first and APF, but it's not just working with, uh, with uh, AFM, it's also working with sand, makes yep. a huge, huge difference. And you know, it's clean water, looks nice, and dirty water does not look like. It's like with a car. If your car is dirty, it's, it's not great to show, right? Yeah. But uh, clean water is. Yep. Okay. Oh, my wife is coming, reason, getting nervous. Reason no no dirty jokes anymore. <laughs> reason number two is uh, safety. We were talking about uh, crypto earlier and, uh, and why this is. So let's, let's jump into this uh, crypto discussion. Yeah, huh? maybe you first explain what's crypto. Yeah, okay. So, so cryptos are parasites, are um, Protosos. a protozoan, a, a pathogen of uh, fecal origin. That's how it gets into the water and they are ingested orally. Huh? So uh, not a very um, appealing um, picture, but this is how it happens. And they cause severe diarrhea or can cause serious intestinal uh, disease. If we so, say serious, it's really serious. Yeah. You know, there is also mortality, one of 400. So it's yeah. And that was once a big outbreak, I think, uh, in the US, there's Milwaukee. A, yeah. or the number, yeah, there's been a number of number yeah. of outbreaks. Number of yeah. outbreaks, right? So so it's it's a very bad um, uh, critter, a very bad pathogen on one side, but what makes it even worse is that it is very resistant to chlorine. Yeah. Huh? Crypto can survive five ppm chlorine or five thousand hours. That's roughly yeah. three months. That, so. that, you know, realistically, that makes yeah. it uh, resistant. Uh, Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's with zero cyanuric acid. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. You, add, when you add cyanuric acid, it's even, it's even. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We don't do that. Exactly. Off this yeah. show, we don't do it anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the good news is uh, cryptos are uh, three to six micron in size. So if you have real good AFMNG filtration, that will be enough. You will be, you will get more, way more than ninety percent out uh, of the water in but, one pass. But not if you have sand, right? And uh, uh, definitely not, you know, if the the sand is coagulated, channeling, you know, then they are just going through. And yep. this is why uh, channeling is never. Also, if you have a, a good flocculation, you know, if you're channeled, you're lost. Yep. But uh, let's say you're not channeled, you know, with sand and especially with AFM because that will never channel, you know, you filter down to, in our case, 0 0.1 micron and in sand maybe to 5 micron, maybe to, to, to 3 micron. Yeah. This is why by law you have to use flocculation 
in most of European countries because of crypto. And honestly, crypto is not really a big deal. It's a little bit a deal uh, in uh, the UK. Yeah. But uh, here in Switzerland, Germany, you very, very seldom hear crypto. Maybe also because it's not that much measured, right? Yeah. But um, anyway, it's, it's, it's something nasty. So don't drink the water. That's number one. Uh, <laughs> number two... <laughs> Use, use coagulation, flocculation. You improve your, your crypto safety by a factor of, of 10, at least. At least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and use our least. AFM. Yeah. So reason number three why using uh, APF is a really good idea is APF, uh, one of the five ingredients, like we mentioned before, is um, a product that we call NOFOS. It's a phosphate remover. Uh, and how does that work? We have uh, phosphate molecules that have uh, uh, three, three times negative uh, charge. Look here. Yeah. This is the phosphate. And we have no phos, which has a three times positive charge. So they're very effectively uh, pulling phosphates out of solution into a small uh, precipitate, into a small particle that then can be easily removed with a flock and with mechanical filtration. And this is why one of our coagulants, this is no false, and we have 1.5 litre, which is a very, very high um, concentration yep. uh, in this. And that really keeps your, your, your uh, phosphates level down. Uh, yep. Yeah, maybe uh, one, one more thing and then we could, oh no. Okay, let's do first this one, sorry. Yes. So. so how do they come in? Yeah, let's quickly talk a little bit about phosphates and how, how do they get into the water? So there's a, a, few, a few ways how they can get in. One of them in outdoor pools are fertilizers. That's a big one. Could be from agricultural uh, runoff. It can also be from fertilizer that's being used in, in your garden, in yeah. the lawn, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, he had that experience. Yeah, just uh, now where my, my wife has arrived, you know, we, we had our daisy pool, all good, all clean. We went two weeks in holiday, came back. The water crystal clear, but it was, was quite some algae. So, uh, of course, she was shouting and said, it's green, why it's green? And uh, then I talked to the gardener and said, did you do anything? Maybe use a fertilizer and wash your can in... In, in, in my pool and uh, he had to agree yes we did uh, because I measured phosphates and it was sky high so really you know uh, he he brought all these phosphates to the water he's not doing anymore I love him he's good but that's <laughs> how you get them in and then if you have them in you know you have a breeding ground for for algae. Yvonne is this story true okay it good. is it is Okay, I, I just have to check sometimes. Sure. You know. Okay, <laughs> so uh, another way for phosphates to get into the pool is, is tap water. So we have, uh, we have phosphates in water reservoirs. We also, uh, the water providers are also adding phosphates. Yeah, you don't have them all the time, but sometimes you have, yeah. you know, especially if you have an old network, you have yep. these metal lines and yep. they are corroded and 100 years old, then to, to, to inhibit uh, the corrosion, they do is phosphate because that's a really good corrosion inhibitor. Uh, and uh, then you can have quite high level of phosphate. Yeah, in Germany, exactly. I had one case, you know, where you had on the tap board, you had four ppm of phosphate, which is, no, 0.2 is high, four is sky yeah. high. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then also, of course, bathers bring in uh, phosphates with uh, skin cells, bacteria. And last but not least, uh, you know, the environment, birds, leaves, pollen, uh, and so on. Okay. So that means outdoor pool is much bigger a problem yeah. than indoor pools unless you have it from the tap water. Yeah. So what we're going to do for dinner or what was here? Yeah, I'm getting hungry just yeah. by uh, just by looking at this. But uh, that's algaes, you know, have a hard time here with uh, with our no phos. So um, phosphates are responsible for the transport of nutrients in uh, in cell membranes. Huh? And what we do by removing phosphates, um, we effectively remove the algae's capacity to metabolize food. Huh? If they cannot metabolize food, the cell will starve and ultimately will die. And this goes back to what we've been saying earlier. It's, it's prevent rather than kill. So 
yes, we are killing the algaes, but we're really doing it with a natural product and in a natural way. Yeah. You know, and to make this clear, you know, if you remove all the phosphates, it's not that tomorrow all your, your algae will die and, and gone. You know, that's a process that will take, they get weaker and weaker and weaker uh, over, over time, you know, over, over six yeah. to 12 weeks. It's a little bit like the, 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 the sailors, you know, who came with the Mayfair, with Columbus, you know, from Europe to America, you know, they were on the boat. They didn't have vitamin C, you know, maybe the first week, but then not. And this is why they got scorbut, or, or mm -hmm. how do you call this? Scurvy. Yeah. Scurvy. Scurvy. Okay. Yeah. They lost their teeth. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is like, uh, this is for algae, the phosphates is like for us the vitamin C. Yep. Good. No, okay. no phosphates, no growth. Exactly. So, by the way, also for bacteria, same thing. One more word about phosphates. There are two types of phosphates in pools that are important. Uh, the first one are free phosphates called orthophosphates. These are the phosphates that are in solution. And these are the phosphates that you measure with a photometer. Yeah, huh? or with a test strip. Or with you a test strip. You can measure free, free <laughs> water. <laughs> What you not, cannot measure is the organic phosphates. You know, the organic phosphates is what is phosphates which are in, in, in organics, for example, in algae or bacteria. So if you look at this pool, nice and clear, but with algae, this is how my pool looked. If you measure here now phosphates, orthophosphates, it's most likely that you measure zero or very low uh, quantities. Why? Because the phosphates are in the algae. But if you make now a chlorine shock and you kill all the algae, you do not remove the algae first, you know, and then make the, the, the chlorine shock. You just leave them in, make a chlorine shock, you know, the easy way. Algae will be gone if you dose high enough, but all the phosphates go back into solution to orthophosphate. And then you have sky high, uh, you have sky high uh, uh, orthophosphate. Yeah. So if you look on the right side, you know, the iceberg, you know, in the, when we have this green pool, it's, it looks a little bit like the iceberg, yeah? You have very small orthophosphate, free phosphate, but you have a lot of organic phosphate. If you make the shock chlorine treatment, you change the iceberg, you know? It's much more above yes. the surface than below. Yes. So, if you use APF, which has 7.5% uh, uh, no phos in it, mm -hmm. um, you can effectively remove your free phosphate reading to zero over time because you're dosing it continuously, you're adding it yeah, continuously. It depends a little bit. Uh, it depends, you know, okay. how much of income you have, you okay. know, from the environment, really. I mean, if you have uh, high levels of phosphates in your incoming water, mm -hmm. or if you have this, if you have this green water, I mean, make a shocked chlorine treatment and then dose no phosphate. Take the phosphates out. If you don't do it, you're in back. Pro you're back in this situation within a week or maximum yeah. two weeks. Yeah. So if you have a phosphate problem, and it would be, you know, always if you have problems with pools, it would be really worse once to to measure the incoming water. Yeah. And uh, if they are high, then it would be really good, you know, to remove them with no phos, yeah. and then keep the APF, you know, the constant dosing just to keep yeah. them down. So no phos, just to mention this, no phos is our product here in Europe. It's the phosphate remover, right? Which uh, are also readily available in the US. Don't we have no phos? Uh, so? No, no. Okay. And, uh, but Pity? when you use <laughs> APF, you will need a lot less of extra oh, yeah. phosphate Absolutely, removers, yeah, right? Yeah. That's really, that's really the message. Oh, did not know that we don't have yep. this in the, not yep. yet or not? No. Okay. It's we we only sell products that are uh, NSA 50 certified, and okay. NOFOS is not yet certified. So. Yeah, but not yet means it could be. It could be. Okay. Yep. Send us some good orders on APF, and that will motivate to do the NSF certification. Yeah, also for NOFOS, it's yep. a great product developed really for for aquariums. Yep. Not uh, really for pools. Okay. It's best to use in pools. Step number three. Yeah, I think ACO, that's... and uh, let's kick it back to Sean. Huh? Yeah. Sure. His favorite sure. uh, product, his game changer product. Absolutely. It blows my mind that ACO is not more widely used in the U.S. We've, we've been talking about this product for years. Uh, everyone talks about the pitfalls of cyanuric acid, and, and this is the solution. 
Um, this, this product can be used in all outdoor pools as well as we're having a lot of success on indoor pools with uh, medium pressure UV systems. Uh, there are two main, two main things that ACO does for us. The first thing that ACO does is it filters UV light to protect chlorine, but it does not affect the efficiency of chlorine as a, as a disinfectant. So we know that, um, that when we use cyanuric acid, we need to use more chlorine in order to have enough active chlorine to disinfect the pool. Uh, that's not the case with ACO. It doesn't attach to the chlorine molecule. What it does is remove energy from UV light. And by doing that, we're, we're, we're protecting chlorine from photolysis, from photoreduction. UV light doesn't burn chlorine out of the water, in other words. It replaces the need for cyanuric acid. So we can still maintain proper levels of free chlorine in the water without stabilized chlorine in UV conditions. Uh, the half-life of inorganic chlorine, for example, is, is 40 minutes under, you know, in UV conditions. Uh, that's increased by 300% when we use uh, ACO. Okay, so for example, if you have two ppms of free chlorine in your pool on a sunny day uh, with no protection, your chlorine, no your chlorine concentration will be one ppm after 40 minutes, huh? basically, right? Right. So you're saying 300% um, increased protection compared to uh, non-stabilized right. chlorine, right? And we know cyanuric acid probably offers better protection, more than 300%, uh, most 400. likely. To be honest, right? we do not know. But yeah. there's yeah. one downside to it, and I know you will talk about this in a minute. So, so reason number two, or, or feature well, number yeah. two. Go one Let's back. go back to the other slide. Okay. Too fast. Sorry. One, we had one more. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, for example, when we look at cyanuric acid concentration in pools, um, the MAC, the Model Aquatic Health Code, right now, and this is going to change, I imagine, but right now it says we can have up to 90 parts per million of cyanuric acid in a public swimming pool. 90? You're kidding. No, it's 90. Yeah, up to 90. That is, that means that our chlorine is only 14% as effective as if there's no, if, if, as if there's no cyanuric acid at all whatsoever. So of, if we have, if we have, you know, seven parts per million chlorine in the water, that's a whole lot of chlorine that can produce harmful disinfectant byproducts, but only 14% of that chlorine is disinfecting the water. So it, it really is, it's, it's, it was a good product when it came out because we didn't, maybe we didn't understand the pitfalls of it, but now that we do, we're seeing a lot more regulation on it. Even at 30 parts per million, the, the effectiveness of chlorine is reduced by over 50%. It's only 43% effective. That's, that's significant. Now with ACO, we can achieve the, a, a similar level of protection, but 100% of the chlorine in the water is ready to disinfect. At, again, assuming proper pH and, and other water conditions, but 100% of what's in the water is available to be a disinfectant. Let me add one thing, Sean, you know, in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, you know, which is a little bit the highest standard in Switzerland, cyanuric acid and many other countries in East Europe, by the way, it's forbidden. You're not allowed to use cyanuric acid in public, just, pools, huh? in public yeah. pools just because of this. In, in yeah. private pools, you are. Yeah. And we are operating our pools between 0.3 to 0.6 free chlorine. I mean, seven, that's, that's a number we even do not know how to write. Right. But uh, yeah, of course, if you have cyanuric acid, yeah. then you have to go yeah. much higher. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that, you know, that was the, I, that was the solution. Well, we can still have safe pools. We'll just increase the amount of chlorine, but you know, that means we have enough chlorine to disinfect in the water, but we also have a whole lot of chlorine to do a whole lot of other bad things. So it wasn't really a complete look at, at all factors when dealing with cyanuric acid. Yeah. So here comes the good news for our, my American friends. We can do it a lot better. You know, we've, and we've changed like nearly nothing. Just use ACO instead of cyanuric acid. And we can do it, we can do it much greener, much better, much less of chlorine, much less of chlorine production, transportation. We can do it. Let's go green. And much cheaper. That's right. too. And much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Much cheaper. Yeah. And it's, and it doesn't build, it doesn't build up in the water. So you don't have issues with, 
with add, with having too much of it over time, like you do with cyanuric acid. Yeah. It's also, of course, it's it's NSF 50, like all of the products that we sell in the U.S. And it's non toxic, non non hazardous, non toxic. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't drink it. Uh... No, you don't want to drink it. <laughs> uh, everything is toxic. Yeah. I know depends you on the concentration. Beer. You okay. prefer beer sure. over ACO, right? Yeah. Not sure. Now when okay. my wife is coming, if yeah. I'm allowed to have a beer off yeah. of that, let's see if you're lucky. But wait, okay. but wait, there's more. Not only do we <laughs> protect chlorine, we also provide a very clean additional disinfectant uh, through a catalytic reaction. So we're, we're amplifying the natural disinfection power of the sun, which is UV, um, through a catalytic reaction. And when, when we remove energy from UV light, that energy has to go somewhere. Energy can't be created or destroyed. Some scientists said that. I learned that in, in high school at some point. And, and what happens is we, we create a catalytic reaction and split water molecules. We're, we have abundant amounts of water in a swimming pool. And we take it and split it. And what it becomes is hydroxyl radicals. And hydroxyl radicals, as you may have remembered in a, in a previous session, are extremely reactive, a very, very powerful oxidizer. They react immediately with organics, and the product of that disinfection reaction are harmless, harmless byproducts, water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So it, it's a very clean reaction. Anytime we have UV exposure to the water with ACO, we're producing this reaction and this additional disinfectant. Let yep. me add one thing. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the sun is the most powerful UV unit we have on this planet. Mm -hmm. And this makes this also without ACO. But with our ACO, we just amplify this production of free radicals. It's not a massive amount of free radicals, a small amount for, of free radicals, but all over in your pool. And it's only working if there is sun. So there is no free radicals during day. It's just uh, in the sun. Or if you cover your pool with a cover, then for this time, you don't have this reaction. But it doesn't matter. When you use the pool, when you open the pool, you get here really an additional disinfection power. And as you right. said, uh, you know, they make complete oxidation without uh, forming any disinfection uh, byproduct. You can even see this, you know, if you have an automatic cover, this sludge covers, you know, that we have very often here. You have covered your pool. It's nice and sunny. You have ACO in your water. Then you open your pool without, and you, you watch at your redox potential. Without dosing any chlorine, you know, your redox potential will, within 15 to 30 minutes, uh, or 45 minutes, depends a little bit on hydraulics, will increase by 50 up to 100 millivolt. Mm. And that means if you control your chlorine with your redox, which is absolutely fine, let's talk about this in the next session, well, then your free chlorine will go down, which is good because it's, it's enough what you have. Yeah. And it's really the redox potential. You know, I think that brings up a good point. We had this question earlier today in another session. How can you measure ACO, you know? Um, so really the best, there is no direct way mm -hmm. to measure concentration of ACO, but really to see and really to understand that ACO in your pool works is to measure your ORP, to measure your chlorine consumption. These are really good ways, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. if you yeah. want to measure it. But you, you yeah. see it, you see it. You know, yeah. you open your pool and then when you open your pool within 50 minutes, you see it becomes even more clear than mm -hmm. it was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. especially if it was not that clear before. Yeah, yeah. and I, I should mention that for our, for our customers that are, that are residential dealers uh, purchasing through Matronics, they have an equivalent product called Enhanced Summer that is sized uh, more in a, in a more residential pool friendly size. They have gallons and half gallons, whereas we sell five gallon containers. Um, so that, that is available through Matronics as well under the Enhanced Summer label. Um, speaking of, uh, again, this is, this is a method that they use in, in Europe, I understand, for uh, determining um, you know, how effective uh, we're disinfecting a pool. And this is a, this is a pseudomonas bacteria um, that we test against, and they, they want a 30-second kill rate uh, for this bacteria. This is one of the ways we measure the safety of a pool. Um, so this is a chart. On the left-hand side, we have the amount of free chlorine, uh, a DPD-1 measurement, and on the bottom, we have cyanuric acid. This is milligrams per liter. It's basically the same thing for parts, parts per million. So at, at 30 parts per million of free chlorine, 
we need to have six parts per million, or sorry, sorry, 30 parts per million of cyanuric acid. We need to have six parts per million free chlorine to kill this pseudomonas bacteria in 30 seconds. Okay. Um, that's, that's a lot of chlorine. That's a ton of chlorine. Um, you know, when you, when you go over and look at even 10 parts per million of cyanuric acid, sorry, Philip, I'm going the other way. Um, you know, you need, you need, looks like what, two and a half, three parts per million of free chlorine in the pool. That's significant. But then when we go on the opposite side, again, the max level allowed by the MAC right now is 90 parts per million. We need 17 parts per million of free chlorine uh, to have a 30 second kill rate. So you can see how negatively chlorine's effectiveness is, is affected by cyanuric acid and, and, and increasing levels of cyanuric acid here. Sean, this is really what's important. The amount of free chlorine in your pool is, is, is only a function of how well it disinfects the pool. And this, is, this chart shows very, very easily how negatively affected chlorine is by cyanuric acid. Yeah, good, never seen that. Yeah. So maybe we did uh, once mm -hmm. in. Now, without any cyanuric acid, and even better with some ACO in it, you will see it goes so much better. Oh, yes. Um, here, uh, uh, an example. This is a water park, Terra Natura, in Spain. It's not Aqua Natura, it's Terra Natura. So apologize for this. You know, it's really, it's not the best installation. Let's say, in clear words, it's a really lousy installation. It's sand, the filters are shitty. It's all wrong that you can do wrong. There is also, they were, didn't have money to, to invest, um, but they asked, okay, what can you do? And we dosed ACO. And by the way, do we get some word to dosing rate later on? Uh, it's right there, the lower Okay, right. that's the only one. Okay, yeah. how you dose? You dose one liter for 100 cubic meter yeah. once per week. Oh. Please start the four, four, four weeks with the double dose. So with two liters on 100 uh, cubic meters. Uh, and then you go to one liter. So we have to, to start a little bit with initial dose. And the last four weeks of the season, you don't have to dose anything. So in average, one liter per 100 cubic meter. Stop. John, I'll, translate, I'll translate that. Yeah, translate that, please. Sure. <laughs> so that's one quart per 20,000 gallons of pool water per week or one gallon per month. One quart per, per week is, per, again, one quart per 20,000 gallons of water per week is is really the ideal way and and you know speaking there's you can dose it manually which is really the most effective way uh or we can you know for public pools that that don't maybe have the best uh, operators at the pool that might not remember we can also dose it automatically we recommend dosing it over time so dividing dividing that quart by the day or or even by the hour if you can um, ACO is an alkaline product and it can clog the lines of, of peristaltic pumps if they sit too long. So we do want to keep it moving, but it can be, it can be done either way. We have companies in, in pools in the U S using this product religiously. Um, I have not a single pool in the U S that has brought on ACO that has stopped using it to my knowledge. So it's, once they start using it, they, they recognize how well it works and they continue to use it. But yeah, again, it's one quart for 20,000 gallons of water per week, double dose during the first month, and then continue the normal dose. It takes a little bit of time for this product to begin working, to build up a residual in the water and begin working. Well, that's not a problem because also springtime, we don't have the, the heavy sun, uh, this yeah. comes then uh, after right. one or two months. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, I prefer the manual dosing. Why? Uh, there are small particles which tend to, to, to sediment. And this is why it would be good, you know, to give a good shake before you dose it. So ideally, you know, even if you, you say, well, I dose my gallon once per month, shake it, dose it a month later, the next gallon. The more, yeah. the better. Yeah. yeah. Dan, Dan, uh, I see Dan still on the call. Um, we've spoken recently about how he had, he, he felt that he had a reduced uh, effectiveness in some pools. We may want to shake those bottles up uh, every once in a while, Dan. That, that may be the solution. Yeah, maybe also something. Please do not start them in full sunlight. Uh, they are the, the new bottles here now are very well protected against sun yeah. and as well as the pallets. But this is the only thing which is not really good. Let's come back to this Terra Natura story in, in Benidorm. You know, they had before combined chlorine of 0 0.3, 0 0.4, which is not high, but for an outdoor pool, you know, with this big UV unit called the sun, it's quite high. Mm -hmm. 
and just by adding uh, ACO, they dropped by 50%, as you can see. So this was before and this was after, 50% less. And then on the turbidity, you know, they had 1.2, which, I mean, I apologize, this is really lousy, this is terrible. Uh, this, for me, this is wastewater, not swimming pool water, and they dropped 2.7. This is, this is not a value I would like to have in my pool. No, we want to have less than 0.1. Uh, NTU of turbidity, but it's it's a reduction of 40%. And this is what they were interested. These guys were only interested in money. This was about uh, chemical consumption. They had, uh, and you say it then uh, later on, in, they had 96,000 liters of uh, sodium hypochlorite, and this dropped to 67,000 liters of sodium hypochlorite. Yeah, this is one and a half truck of, of chlorine. And which does not go into environment, doesn't have to be produced, transported, etc. Mm. So it's a big saving. It's, it's a very about, big saving. So it's about eight thousand gallon of uh, bleach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my it's pork. Big, it's a big number. <laughs> big number. Big number. Okay. Uh, what else? We killed we kill the chemical yeah. business in the US. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what else uh, is there to say about ACO, Sean? You mentioned availability: five gallon drums. Yep, uh, I've got, yes, I have five gallon containers yep. in stock in, in the US, um, readily available. Yep. Uh, contact me. As this case study shows, ACO can be used as a standalone product. It can be used with any type of filtration. Sure. The any, any type of disinfection, really. The e cartridge. Yep. A great product for saltwater yep. pools. Absolutely, yeah. That, what's oh, yeah. what's the benefit of using it in a saltwater pool? Yeah, if you reduce the chlorine demand, uh, like we had it here, by thirty percent, that means your salt chlorinator will work thirty percent less, and that will improve your lifetime of your of your cell by thirty percent. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's significant, yeah. and your water will be clear. Yeah, less and you mentioned chlorine. it. NSA fifty non hazardous. Great product. Okay. So please use the, the chat function to place your orders right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So we have, uh, as always, we have great videos summarizing everything. I think for time reason, we will we'll probably skip this or we show it at the very end for those who want to stay online for three or yeah. four more minutes. Yeah. And if not, um, go to our YouTube yes. channel. It's really explaining. I don't know. I, Florent does makes a job in four minutes where it takes us uh, one hour. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's fresher, it's younger, exactly. it's understandable, but yeah. it's really well explained. Okay, and also we have a great brochure that's also available for you to download from our website, explaining the whole DAISY system, taking you through the details. It's also a great uh, document to share with your customers uh, that are interested in uh, such a Written from me solution. and Philip, yeah. but in a good animation from it. Absolutely. Uh, this is from one of your pools, huh? Yeah, that's uh, in Florence, Greece. Greece, yeah. Greece. This is not the most, the richest country in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And this is how a 50 meter pool looks like. Look at the swimmer. Look at at the 50 meters. And for all the ladies, we took here uh, a, a swimmer, you know, to show how good it is, also for them. Yeah. So yeah. this is what you can achieve, you know, this is what we want for the dolphins and for the swimmers. Okay, Outlook session number seven in a week from today. We will be talking about oxidation. Huh? Yeah, all the different oxidants, also a little bit about ozone and uh, uh, of course chlorine and free radicals. Explain difference free chlorine versus redox, versus redox value, redox potential, what it is. Then we shorter we talk about uh, uh, the DHM. Yeah. yeah, we will do. But really, I think that will be the most interesting part for you about corrosion. We have problems here with corrosion in, 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 in Europe, and I'm sure you have it too in uh, America. And let's talk about where is corrosion coming from. And this is what we'll do with the yeah. Van Gallier Index. Yep. Yep. Okay, good. So we're ready to take your questions. We have, uh, let's go to the Q&As. Q&A. Kenneth. What is the injection dosing rate for APF? Is there a chart? Okay, uh, uh, shall I take it? Maybe you translate it then in <laughs> Imperial. I'm not good in Imperial. Uh, we, in, in public pools, we always recommend to start to dose one milliliter per cubic meters of, of circulation of turnover. Huh? 
and then you watch how it is you know if it's crystal clear i'm really talking about crystal clear after two weeks you drop it by 50 percent and you could do it even once more after two to, two weeks to find the sweet spot to huh? find the yeah. sweet spot so yeah. it's something between 0.25 to one milliliter. Yeah. It might be if you have a very heavy loaded system like uh, spas that you have to dose uh, a little bit more to, mm -hmm. to find the sweet spots. You also could measure aluminum and, and things like this, but I yeah. wouldn't mess around. One milliliter per cubic meters of turnover. Okay. That, that's, so that's in American. That's about, it's about one ounce per, it's really one ounce per 18,000 gallons of water circulated. Okay. So, you know, you take your gallons per minute you divide 18,000 by your gallons per minute, and then, you know, that's going to then multiply that by 60 so that you can find out your, your ounces, your, your amount per ounces. I have a calculator, Ken, um, that I can send you. I think I, I sent you one that showed you how to dial in the, um, the stenter pump. So you put in your gallons per minute flow, and it told you where to put the dial on the stenter pump. That made it really easy, but I also have one that'll give you the ounces per hour. Okay. Of, of dosing. All your inquiries, send it to Sean at drydenacqua.com and mm -hmm. he, can, uh, he can help you. Okay, we have more questions, a lot of questions here. That's great. So from Midwest uh, Pool, does ACO stabilize bromine if used in outdoor pools? I think it does. Honestly, I don't have too much of experience with, uh, with bromine, mm -hmm. but uh, it should. Yeah, it should. But uh, to be honest, I'm not so sure. Help us in R&D, test it out, tell us the results. <laughs> so we share it then in session number 11. <laughs> okay, good. Can you use, next question, can you use ACO in a PHMB pool as extra oxidizer? Okay, dear, dear friends from Midwest Pool, that goes also back to you, to the R&D center. Honestly, I don't have mm -hmm. uh, the experience. That's, uh, I, that's that is, um, if I'm not mistaken, we're talking about... Uh, Guanides. By guanides, is that correct, Midwest? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, you, you may be able to use it. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, help us in the R&D. Welcome yeah. in our team. Yeah, that's great. Good questions. Okay, oh, next good one. Good answer. <laughs> Does it make <laughs> sense the, yeah. to use ACO with a stabilizer level high or in range? Does it make sense to use ACO with a stabilizer? So, yeah, yeah yes, because you're going to get the, the reduction in turbidity and you're going to get additional protection from the sun, but it makes more sense to lower the, lower the stabilizer level in the pool and optimize your, your chlorine. Um, so especially if it's high, um, you know, there's no reason to have any cyanuric acid in the pool when you use ACO or enhanced summer. But definitely, I mean, yeah, it's okay to use it with it. There's no interaction between the two, but you're, you'd be better off getting, getting rid of the cyanuric acid. Okay, I also understood it. Let me also share quickly an experience. We had one pool in uh, Spain. They had uh, stabilized chlorine, you know, the chlorine tablets, and they used ACO. They had AFM, ACO, uh, also APF, and uh, they got green, green water. I mean, very clear, but a little bit green. And it was a big... <laughs> Honestly, I was twice there and once we powered, you know, until uh, we found out. Uh, so with Howard, we found it out. I didn't. Uh, yeah. What was the, the, the problem? You know, on this cyanuric acid, it's, it's organics. And on this, you, in, in this water, you had uh, iron. And yeah. uh, this was never a problem before because the oxidation was not high enough to oxidize the iron. So the iron stayed more or less in solution attached to the, to the cyanuric acid. But when we added the ACO, the redox potential went up, it oxidized the iron. <laughs> this made it green, and this you could see. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were not happy and say, well, we did that it before ACO. Yeah, because they had less of oxidation uh, potential. Yeah. So this pool is now operating on sodium hypochlorite, on bleach, bleach, I mm -hmm. think is the right word, and uh, without cyanuric acid, and they're very happy. You can do it. If, if you get green water, that might be the problem. Yeah. Okay, I see. Any problem you have, go to Sean. If Sean can't do it, he comes back to us. If we can't do it, we go to Howard. So, yeah. bam, bam, bam. I can see there's been a few more questions from Midwest Pool uh, that Sean's already answered uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, about availability, 
then what else do we have? Is chlorine so reduced if it goes through a UV chamber? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Heavily. You know, and uh, the more energy you bring in, it's, it's the same if the sun. It's the same if the sun, but usually medium pressure will reduce the chlorine concentration roughly by 50%. And if using ACO, is it used up and faster with the system? It will protect, uh, it will protect the, yeah. the chlorine. Not, not 100%, but it will be reduced. Mm -hmm. You will see this in session number eight. I'm not a big fan of UV systems. We have far better technologies than, than this, cheaper and better technologies than uh, this. And uh, I, I don't like them because of the THM uh, uh, creation. If you dose ACO on permanence in front of the UV medium pressure, the, the production of THMs will drop roughly by 20 to 30% and also the chlorine consumption. So mm -hmm. if you say, Dominic, I love... My medium pressure, okay, dose ACO uh, at the same rate as you do APF just in front of uh, the UV medium pressure. Okay. I don't think there were any other questions that weren't answered already. Anything else in the chat or the Q&A? No? No. Okay. We he sell a lot of dichlor and trichlor. Yeah, yeah that's, that was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, okay, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah. Back. back to the video. Before we do, uh, thank you for joining yes. us. We hope to see you again in a week from today. And definitely in two weeks, because then we are talking about public pools. Yeah. And you guys, this is, this is really your subject. So I will have all American here on the, the call, right? <laughs> good. Yes. Have a good weekend. Thank you, all everyone. Bye-bye. One more. Okay. There we go. The highest water and air quality in swimming pools. Marine biologist Dr. Howard Dryden has developed Daisy, a unique biological water treatment solution adapted to all public and private swimming pools. Instead of letting bacteria grow and using high quantities of disinfectants and expensive equipment to kill them, Daisy changes the living conditions to make it difficult for bacteria and parasites to live and reproduce. By preventing bacterial growth at the source, DAISY significantly lowers the cost of water treatment, enhances water clarity, and provides much healthier swimming conditions for all pool users. How does it work? DAISY consists of three integrated steps. The first step consists of improving filtration and eliminating the breeding ground on which bacteria can grow with AFM activated filter media. Manufactured in ultra-sophisticated factories in Switzerland and Scotland, fully powered by solar energy, AFM is a highly engineered, activated filter media made from green and brown recycled glass that replaces sand in all types of sand filters. The glass is intensively washed using 100% rainwater before being sterilized to become the purest glass on the market. It is then automatically color sorted to remove the white and clear glass, then reduced to a precise particle size and shape with no sharp edges that can injure you or damage your filter. Finally, the glass is exposed to a three-step chemical and thermal activation process to become self-sterilizing and to acquire superior adsorption properties. AFM gets its self-sterilizing properties from free radicals formed on the surface of the grains when water flows through the filter, making AFM the only 100% bioresistant filter media on the market. Thanks to this unique feature, AFM not only provides safe water by ensuring that no unfiltered water and pathogens enter the pool, but also offers much healthier air conditions by preventing the biological conversion from urea to ammonia responsible for the formation of harmful volatile byproducts and chlorine smells. In addition, the absence of biofilm in the filter bed enables AFM to get rid of all impurities during shorter and slower backwashes than with sand, saving up to 50% backwash water for a quick return on investment. What's more, the activation process increases the surface area of the glass and makes it hydrophobic to filter much finer particles and to remove about 50% more organic substances from the water than sand and other glass filter media. Why is this important? Because organics react with chlorine in the water to form a chloroform, 
a volatile and harmful disinfection byproduct that we want to reduce in all swimming pools to offer pool users, and especially children and baby swimmers, the best air quality. The second step involves coagulation and flocculation with APF and ZPM to remove dissolved pollutants and phosphate from the water, a vital nutrient for bacteria. Because most of the chlorine demand comes from dissolved substances in the water, Dr. Dryden developed APF, a highly concentrated liquid product containing a precise combination of coagulants and flocculants. APF is slowly injected using a constant flow peristaltic pump into a ZPM static mixer that provides the perfect turbulent environment for coagulation reactions. Alternatively, if the use of a ZPM isn't possible, APF can be injected into or right before the filtration pump. When APF is combined with AFM, activated filter media, filtration down to 0.1 micron can be achieved. As a result, pool water becomes crystal clear, while chlorine demand and the formation of unwanted chlorine byproducts are reduced to the lowest possible level. The third and final step consists of using ACO, a highly innovative and eco-friendly liquid product for outdoor pools that has two main functions. ACO filters UV light to protect chlorine against the photoreduction from the sun without reducing chlorine efficiency, making ACO a perfect ecological alternative to traditional stabilizers such as cyanuric acid. Moreover, ACO acts as a photocatalyst that, in combination with sunlight, generates free radicals to oxidize pollutants in the water. As a result, the chloramine concentration in swimming pools can be reduced by up to 50%. ACO is a natural, non-hazardous product which does not form any harmful disinfection byproducts. DAISY's unique combination of AFM, APF and ACO offers the safest and clearest water, the best air quality and lowers operating costs in all swimming pools. Enjoy the healthiest pool experience with DAISY by Dryden Aqua.